Well, I don't know what to say. I've just watched the final episode of uh, Star Trek Discovery. I don't know if I feel let down or happy or what. I'm going to watch it again. It was an interesting experience after last week's episode when, when Jojo walked onto the bridge. You were edge of your seat, you're thinking she's gonna, this is it, the, King, the Klingons are gonna get their ass kicked. And it never happened. It's, it wasn't, the episode didn't go the way I thought it was. I thought they'd take the discovery into the planet, uh, plant a bomb, I thought that, or strike at the planet's core, threaten it, or do something. Federation Task Force would come in, they'd take out its defences and totally obliterate the surface of the planet with uh, the military installations, shipyards. All oh, that never happened. It, 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 it went in a really sort of strange sort of way. We find out the Orions have a settlement on Kronos near the embassy. Uh, obviously the Klingons have ties with them. Uh, we get into Georgia on at Krono. There's this, this dark plan that's going ahead. Uh, they think they're going to go down into these volcanic things, find the shrine of Molar, and uh, map out the uh, volcanic tubes of the planet, and then obviously do something to threaten the Klingons, where they will back off, because obviously cause Kronos is very quite a holy planet. So I mean, the place looked like a complete dump. I mean, I wouldn't want to live there. I mean, it's interesting how you see Klingon home world compared to Federation home world. You get them two sort of views. It's very character oriented, is this uh, episode, which I did like the character interaction. Uh, Saru takes command. I like Saru, big fan, real big fan of Saru. Uh, it, it, for me, you can make him captain of that ship permanently and uh, you could get quite into that of the series not a problem uh, well anyway they get together Tyler gets called into a room she figures out that she's the evil version of Captain Giorgio obviously there must have been some interaction between her and the Empress in the other universe some romance or summer. and they beam down to uh, the Stamets they jump the ship smack into a part of Kronos it stabilises itself, and they go off into this part where looking for this uh, early shrine temple. It's in these caverns, and they've got this box. And, and it's quite an interesting thing they get into. You see a round slave go, well, they're not there, actually, they're in charge. It's the men that are slaves, isn't it? And they uh, get into this sort of like marketplace where there's action going on. And Giorgio gets all, she, she goes and wanders off into her like She gets into these two dancers and she has, uh, well, she, she gets laid and uh, Tyler gets stoned, which it were all quite funny. I mean, Giorgio were completely ruthless. And uh, it were all about her, 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 what she wants. Meanwhile, Burnham and, 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 and Vok or Tyler, uh, you know, I feel I really do like Tyler's character. Uh, there's a great scene in the brig where Giorgio just kicks the living shit out of Laurel. Uh, and but Laurel won't give it information. It's interesting, is that? Uh, I mean, it's, I love the character of Giorgio. I really do. I, I don't know why they killed him off in first two episodes, but I know we've got the evil version running about now, which is sort of brilliant. Uh, they jump, I mean, we get back to the marketplace, that's me going off, of course, there's so much in this episode to digest. A lot going on in this marketplace, you see quite a lot. I wouldn't want to live on Kronos, like I said before, shit all. Uh, you know, so so anyway, the, anyway, Tyler gets stoned. Anyway, this Orion's trying to open a suitcase. She opens it up, there's an hydrogen bomb in there. Uh, Giorgio, uh, she tries to tell Burnham, Giorgio turns up, smacks her one and uh, and drops the bomb down into the uh, into the volcanic thing in the temple and uh, 
Burnham gets back to discover it as a big moral thing and, and she gets the Admiral online. She says, look, you know, they're going to annihilate us. We've got to do it to them. We, well, they did it in DS9, didn't they, Federation? Look what they did with Founders. You know, so, I mean, you know, they, they, this moralistic thing. Now, but what was interesting, when they got the moralistic thing, Burnham said, look, I'm, I'll, I'll, there'll be another mutiny here. And everybody backed her on the bridge. Because the only thing we've got left is our principles. If we annihilate this lot, there's going to be no fucking point. You know, we're going to be worse than them. Because the Klingons won't stop till they're all dead. So, I mean, it does put you in a bit of a situation. But, I mean, you know, I don't know. In, in reality, would you have would you have done it? You, you know, it's you or them, isn't it? I mean, that's the question here. But she found a third way which was sort of interesting she did she were lucky how this situation played out and then there's a she she ends up finding Giorgio down the thing and there's a confrontation but Giorgio can't kill her uh, because she reminds her of Burnham she gives her this thing that says she can go free she threatens her I mean there's all this like talk and she threatens says look if you're gonna let this bomb go off you know, and but George was saying, look, in my universe, we didn't have time for this shit getting moralistic. And she said, yeah, but that's what makes us different. And she says, look, that's what holds you back. But there's two philosophies arguing here. And I do go with Michael Burnham's call. She played it out wonderfully. And and anyway, George who fucks off and signs bomb over to her, and Laurel comes into it. And it ends up, they give her a bomb. I was quite surprised at that. And she goes and she tells them, you know, Burnham says, look, you know, you have this vision at Empire, go restore it. And she turns up at Nike Arms, they all features a joke. And then she threatens them with antigen bombs, says, look, you know, if you don't do it, I'll destroy the fucking planet. So she becomes the new leader of the uh, Empire. But in the next generation, they did say that female Klingon women want to sit on the throne. So I don't know. I'm not going to continue to just enjoy it for what it is. And, and we get back to Earth and, and it's very Star Trek, very, very much of the movies, you know, at the end where they're in, you know, the Federation Council, the Enterprise, they all do it on that final episode where they're all lined up together, the crew, they all get promoted and for, for the service, to, you know, to Federation. And Burnham gets a rank back where she's like science officer now and and she's on discovery and she gets a record expunged and it's all interesting. But then we get a hint that they get, they're off on a mission to Vulcan and to pick up the new captain. Now I've started to wonder, I'll go into this in a minute, so that were interesting. Anyway, there's a beautiful shot of Magic Next Generation where you see the ship flying past the camera, night view shot. Stunning shot, really like them shots back on Star Trek. You got the feel that this is the original Star Trek. And and it does very touch on the older sort of Star Trek feel. And I was really happy about that. And then suddenly they get a distress signal. And, and the type in it's a Federation ship NC-1. I, I knew it's the Enterprise. I knew it. And it's Captain Pike. And then we see the Enterprise at the end and it's like oh my god my god it, it's the enterprise but it looks totally fucking different but i'm not going it i'm not complaining it looked cool i was just happy seeing it but it looked different right so you know <laughs> i'm not going there i just accepted it yeah it's the enterprise right this has got to be set in the abrams universe i don't know why it, it's got to be but they're saying it's not. So, and that's where it finishes, you know, it finishes very nicely. But I also feel a bit cheated as well, because I thought we'd have got the uh, Federation fleet going in and laying waste to all. They want to kill the civilian population, but they led under, led under Empress. She would have been fucking ruthless. She would have stuck that knife right to the Klingon's throat. And... And, and done that. I really wanted to see that, but we didn't. They absolutely... I mean, they played a blinder, really, didn't they, in this. They took it in another direction. And it was clever how they've done it, but I think a lot of people are going to feel a bit cheated with this. 
you know, I mean, there were some great character interactions and developments going on. A lot of plot holes were, were rolled up. I do miss Lorca. You know, I really do miss Lorca. I, I, I just wished he was in this. I really do. But is he the new captain on Vulcan waiting to take command of the ship? We don't know. I, 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 I'm hoping it's Garth. You know, Garth's on eyes is going to take command of the ship and take it from there. So they're holding the new captain back, so who's going to sit in the big chair. I think a lot of people thought Burnham might get the ship. She might get promoted for a duty. I like how uh, Tyler Vock went off in the middle, which was interesting. He went off with Laurel, but he's like a prisoner of two worlds. And it was quite ruthless what Giorgio said to him. That is the thing of, you know, no side wants him. But... He's got this pretty interesting relationship with Laurel, so that's obviously they're going to be back. I think Giorgio's going to become a protagonist in this. I mean, she's stuck in our universe, obviously, until she gets the tech to get back. But I think she's going to start causing a lot of trouble in, in the episode. She's going to become like a pirate or something, an interstellar marauder. I can see her doing that and they're going to have to deal with her in the next season she's going to become the main bad guy in the next series that is a definite you know it she is right so that's i like that i like that idea that she's going to become some kind of warlord or space pilot because she wants power and she's going to get power so that's it in a mission to get back so, so I, I don't know it, it's i'm going to give this seven out of ten out so i'll give it an eight no, seven and a half. It, it's, I'm not, for, it, it, for it, in a way, you are sort of satisfied with this. And you're not, it, it is, I felt that there was something missing. That it, this should have gone out with a bang and a big cliff. I mean, the cliffhanger were cool, it was. But this should have gone out with a massive bang. A real big bang at the end of this. And it didn't. It went out in sort of just under a bang. It went out with enough. After the last three or four weeks with each episode of just having you at the end of your seat. This didn't quite do it. But it did restore the Star Trek thing. The feel of being in Star Trek. It, it restored that which was really interesting you know and i saw sorry that's it's gone back on that thing and and it took it in that direction which made this really interesting you know so hang on i don't know what's going on here it shouldn't have done this no. And it took it in a, it just took it in this direction that obviously they've opened it up to the second season and it's about exploration. So now we're going to get the episodes of where they're going to go to different places and, and character development. I want to see more of the bridge crew in the next series. You know, the cyborgs and, and all the other crew, I really do. But I'm not. I'm not gonna knock. I mean, there has been faults, obviously, in Discovery. But na I'd say 95% of this has been. It has been enjoyable. Now, now let's go into the continue to it. Uh, the continue of the of the Star Trek universe. Obviously, it's in there. I mean, is it set? It, I mean, you could say it could be in a completely different parallel universe. It could be, it, but it's the same. It's prime. And, you know, I think the matters are just set in the Abrams universe, quite frankly. And because if, if it is there, then, you know, I, I'll just accept it. I do not have a problem with that. Because then so be it, it's where it is. But I don't think it is it's in the Prime universe. And like I said, <laughs> I've been there for so much, haven't they? Yeah. It has been... Uh, oh, oh, my gadgets are going off. Right, it has been extremely interesting. So I think we're going to get the Empress. She's a protagonist in the next series. She's going to be Empire building. I think Laurel and the Klingons are obviously going to be back. The crew is going to be on like this new mission of exploration. 
obviously I think there'll be a lot of politics in with the Federation and all this other stuff. Section 31 is going to come into this as well. Is there another Lorca out there? Or did the other Lorca survive in the network? He could come back, Jason Isaacs. I've heard he is signed up for the second season. I could be wrong. That's what I read online. And who's the new captain? Who's going to be the person that's going to sit in the big chair? So is this captain a permanent fixture to the series now? Is it going to be focused on him? We'll have to wait and see. So the old thing of discovery is open for discovering, you know. So that was cheesy. And uh, that's it. Uh, I mean, I've en I, I have enjoyed this series. But I think that's all I've got to say on it. I'm going to watch it again. But I, I don't know. It did restore something though, didn't it? It restored an old balance. It brought the feel of Star Trek back. And that's what it's about. It had that on the last... 10 minute it brought in the thing and the space opera we've been watching i mean it has been like a big space opera a friend of mine calls it babylon battle star trek you know because it's got all these qualities in it i mean it did and i agree where it's coming from on that it has these feelings but they went from all that to the last couple of minutes and restored it to that feel of Star Trek. They even finished with the music in the credits. So good on them. You know, well done guys. Star Trek Discovery. Roll on season two. And well, I, well, I don't know what I'm going to review after this. I really don't know. I'm a bit at a loss. So I will uh, see you on the next video guys. Have a great day. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this. And you know, open to debate. So... Live long and prosper.